Hello reformers and welcome back to the last days of the third age. Now when we left off we were doing a little bit of scouting and a little bit of invading of Rohan's territory. We didn't really accomplish too much with the exception of eliminating one of their caravans, which I can only hope did have a well I'm going to I'm not going to say significant effect, but I'm hoping that it had a little effect against their prosperity and making them a little bit more worse for wear. And now we are currently embroiled in a battle. As you can see, my HP is actually very low because I just did a battle with a couple of deserting orcs. There were about 40 of them and uh, they were actually kind of easy to eliminate, but I got myself killed, which is obviously always the case with me. But we were able to achieve a victory and uh, gain a, a couple of orcish weapons and things like that and we were able to sell those just recently. There's the Lancer with a nice knock on the noggin and uh, he's now knocked unconscious isn't he? So that's great. Anyway, what we're going to do in this episode is we are going to attempt once more either to maybe go over to the elf area and maybe do a little bit of a little bit of attacking over there, or maybe we're just going to continue our crusade against the Rohan faction and we'll see what we can do about them. Generally, I don't really mind too much about Rohan in general. I, I personally don't really mind their units that much, with the exception of the horse archers, I guess. But the elves, they very much irritate me, and I would very much like to attack them, but they're quite far away from Isengard itself, and it would be kind of nice for us to maybe just expand Isengard's immediate area, shall we say, and then from there continue onward. Now, the only reason why I was actually participating in this battle is to help this Isengard supply train from being attacked and obviously it also then gives me an opportunity to take a whole bunch of prisoners I don't know whether you noticed but I actually do have a nice a nice chess piece that's the chess piece that I was looking at in the previous episode and I was deliberating about whether I should get it or not and I did actually get it so that's that's pretty nice so let's go into our barracks once again we're just gonna sell these prisoners and uh, yeah we're, we're making a huge amount of money from these prisoners actually which is really really great and uh, yeah we need to obviously make our way over into Rohan's territory once again. Let's see if anyone leveled up. Yes, it seems like they did level up. And I might need to rest up a little bit before we go any further. White Hand Riders. I don't exactly know whether they're any good. But maybe they are. Maybe they're not. I, I guess we'll, we'll find out in just a second. I'm just going to take a look at them. And they have 48 HP. They don't have any iron flesh, which is probably the reason for their low HP. But they do have a little bit of power throw and some power strike. So they are generally okay, but they're not amazing. Alright, so upon resting up for a little bit and uh, actually delivering the letter that I uh, forgot to do between episodes, I just did that just now, we have now returned to Saruman, and as you can see, he's given us a pretty interesting task, and that is, of course, to kill, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, he wants us to kill exactly 42 Rohan troops. That's not too bad. I mean... As long as it's not 43, we should be fine, right? Yes. Anyway, I will do what you ask, and uh, the men will bear witness to it. Bear? Did you get it? Bear Uruk witness? Yes. Ah. Okay, he's going to court very soon, isn't he? All right. Well, anyway, let us go over to Rohan's territory. This is going to be kind of difficult, I think, for us, because this outpost is currently under siege by a rather scary individual. And that is King Theoden himself. Yes, King Theoden himself is like, yes, I'm out on the uh, on the on the plains and uh, defending my my home and everything. And we're like, no, we would like to nom on your face. So uh, yes, I don't exactly know what's going on here. Whether Isengard is going to defend or whether they are just going to allow this to happen. Let's actually just go a little bit closer. Oh, they're defending. They are actually defending. This is pretty crazy. Uh, it does not look good. That suffice it to say. It does not look good. Look at that. 383 versus 439. However, according to you in the comments, the forces of evil uh, slash Mordor slash Isengard, they are much better at night than they would normally be. 
And uh, I don't exactly know how accurate that is, obviously, but uh, that sounds very good to me. So we are probably going to head in here and see what we can do. All right, so it is actually 409, 409, yes, that's what I said, 409 against 393, I think. So this is going to be kind of, well, weird and a bit bad. And amusingly enough, I am in command of my own units, no one else's, obviously. I'm just a crank turner at the moment, so obviously I'm not going to have much influence, but... It seems like uh, the forces of Isengard are doing their thing and getting people into position. I'm actually going to move my people into position as well because I want to help them out as much as I can. And we'll see if that actually has any effect on the battle's outcome. Amusingly enough, usually I would expect Isengard to have the advantage in terms of numbers, but we don't. So that tells me that we are probably going to be in a lot of trouble. Yes, a lot of trouble indeed. So let's see what actually happens here. I'm actually just going to follow what the Isengard forces do. I'm not going to send my people in or anything like that ahead of schedule. It seems like we actually do have the advantage in terms of numbers though, because I have 15 and our allies have 58 and the enemies only have 56. So technically we should be okay. I'm going to get up my two-handed sword here. I actually did buy a two-handed sword at the hunting camp when I was over there. And uh, we're going to try and do our best to use it. Obviously, I've never used a two-handed sword before, so this is going to be kind of interesting. Let's just see if I can maybe just... Uh, 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 come on, take him, take him out. Yes, take out his horse at the very least. Wow, he's actually taking a lot of damage right there. Is this the king himself? No, it's not, but it is a lord. It is a lord himself, too. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Maybe we can do something else here. Wow, we're actually, we're actually doing pretty well. Are we? Oh, nice. Ah, oh, there's level 15 for Bear Uruk. Very good. Very good, Bear Uruk. You're doing a very good job there, getting that XP. Very good. Okay, so let's just see if we can maybe... Yeah, there we go. I, you know what? I feel like this this sword is actually not doing that much damage in comparison to what you'd expect, because it actually has 39 cutting damage. But obviously, I would expect it to do a little bit less damage against heavily armored targets in comparison to our other weapon, the uh, the large two-handed club, but uh, obviously that does have the added benefit of being much better against heavy targets, so maybe we just want to try it out and see, what, see how much it does. So it does about 28 in comparison to the other thing doing not that. Yeah, it does 38 now. Hmm. I'm a bit, uh, a bit skeptical about that. I spent 900 resource points on the two-handed sword because I thought to myself yeah a two-handed sword that's probably going to be kind of nice to use because it's going to have a little bit more reach and maybe a little bit more speed it actually has a lot more speed than the club and uh, it seems like uh, it seems kind of similar in its damage but maybe it's just because we're not actually fighting units that are good with the club and good with the sword you know like the sword is obviously not very good against heavily armored targets in comparison to the club, and the club is not very good against units that are lightly armored, even though, they're, you know, they're, it's fine, but you can see here, 61 damage against something like that, 54 against the lower tier units. So it seems like for slaughtering, a sword is a good idea, but for, well, units that are a little bit more difficult to take out, the club is probably a good option. And uh, I'm kind of sad that I'm not able to ride horses, even though I'm an Uruk, and uh, we're kind of humanoid, but obviously the horses are kind of scared, and uh, that's probably not going to work out too well. I'm actually wondering, do you think I should use... I, I don't think I even need to, to be honest. Using my rally at the moment is kind of pointless. It seems like the enemies are falling before the forces of darkness very, very easily. Oh, morale of your troops wavers. I don't need to rally my troops yet? Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of sad. I was hopeful that I might be able to, and there are a huge amount of horse archers right here, and they are all firing at us in a very, very, well, uncomfortable way. You can see they're just literally like trotting along on their horses and just shooting at everyone that tries to get close to them, and this is exactly the reason why I hate horse archers. Yes. They're very good at what they do, don't get me wrong, but they are very annoying. Yes. Very annoying indeed. Okay, I guess, you know what? I'm, I, I think I might just have to retreat here. I don't exactly know what's going on here. 41. We might be okay. I mean... 
Oh, it doesn't look good, actually. It doesn't look good. I mean, look, 35. Maybe if we're able to do, to defeat this wave, then I think we will do pretty well. But if we're not able to defeat this wave, and yeah, new enemies are coming in. Bear that in mind. Yeah, I don't exactly know what I should do right now. It's either that I retreat and don't get anything from the fight, or we just allow the fight to continue and we just see, oh, there we go, we actually did, <laughs> we actually did complete that quest, which is actually kind of the reason why I wanted to participate in this battle anyway, but I also kind of wanted to maybe take a couple of the enemies prisoner or execute them or whatever we can do, because bear in mind, this mod does have permadeath. It has permadeath when it re when, in regards to lords and uh, things like that. I actually just saw someone from the Harad Dream get themselves killed in battle when he was defeated. So that's pretty awesome. I actually really, really like that. I know of, I think, I think two other mods that I've played that have a sort of permadeath where you're able to execute lords and they are then removed from the game, basically. But uh, I, I don't think that's how this works. I think if they fall in battle, they all have a chance to be killed outright, rather than just knocked unconscious all the time. So it is kind of impactful for that to happen, because the, the lords and the, the AI in general have to be much, much more careful when it comes to engaging certain fights. Obviously, they're generally not being that careful, but having that additional kind of problem to deal with where your lords might actually get themselves killed when they head into battle is kind of uh, kind of more atmospheric I guess you could say kind of more immersive than uh, when they're just consistently knocked unconscious and then they're back on their feet in a number of days and uh, they have a full army you know that just doesn't that's just not realistic, but this is a little bit more realistic than that. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Anyway, you can see here that we're actually fighting back. The enemies have lost considerably more units than we have, and it's it's kind of weird. I don't exactly know why that would be. I guess it is just because we have more units, and that that's literally it. We just have more units on the battlefield. I mean, every single time we just have more units, so I guess that's pretty good. Although we are starting to lose more and more units now that the enemy's horse archers are coming in and actually doing something. Because it seems to, it, to go in a couple of waves here. Because every single time the horse archers come in, they kill a whole bunch of us. We kill the horse archers. And then they do the same thing again and just rinse and repeat that particular strategy. And uh, that's kind of annoying. That's kind of annoying. So hopefully we will be able to track them down. Mm -hmm. Yes, with our Urukai trackers. Maybe we'll be able to, you know, shoot them off their horses or something. Okay, let's watch this goblin fight this mounted, mounted archer. I don't know whether it's a goblin or an orc. I think it's an orc. Yep, it's a fell orc. Yeah, that's... Uh that's not very good. That, that was not very good. But obviously, these fell orcs, they're not going to be a match for something that is on a on a mount unless they have a spear like this, for example. But uh, yeah, it really depends. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. It depends whether they're able to stop them really nicely. Oh, he got... Yeah. He got ganged up on. That was not really good. But we're doing okay. I mean, the enemies... Yeah, look at that. They're, they're, they're losing. They've lost about 225 units now out of their 400, or almost 400. And we've only lost about 180. So that's pretty decent. 190 now. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So... Um, oh, that's actually... You know, that's actually closer than I would like. That is a lot closer than I would like. Let's actually go over here and take a look and see what's actually going on over in this direction. Seems like there's a whole bunch of fighting in all kinds of different areas on the battlefield. We have our archers, which I'm going to say they're probably not the best archers ever, but we have our archers over there shooting away and attempting to help our infantry against the enemy's infantry, which do seem to be kind of low tier at the moment, with the exception of these guys that are wearing mail armor, our chain mail armor, and uh, the other ones over here are fighting the horse archers which have thankfully now been killed it seems like they've now been killed all the horses are lying down there just uh, having a little rest y yeah I know I know anyway the point is 
we might we might be able to do it but I don't exactly know if it's worth me losing 21 of my own units to achieve this victory but I suppose we'll find out shortly well it seems like the forces of Rohan are currently dwindling and it doesn't seem like they are willing to throw more men into the fire as it were and uh, yeah you can see here they only have 12 remaining and we are now starting to run the rest of them down I did lose 21 still in this battle I actually thought that I might lose more but I only have three units on the battlefield from my own army so I guess it's not really a big deal ah it's this camera oh I see I actually wondered which uh, after battle camera the mod was using but it's a, a uh, it's a camera that was used in a old version of fantasy Calradia a long time ago and uh, I think it's been changed now but yeah it happens when you use your battle map while you are dead and then you move around with the WSD keys it's kind of a bit weird but it can uh, it can add a little bit of hilarity sometimes anyway there you go we are done with that battle and what really are you serious four of my units actually ran away that is kind of disappointing anyway the enemy lost 304 units total and we well allies lost 181 we lost 39 we are prepared for one more battle. So let's do this. 212 against the enemy is 112. So we generally will have the advantage in terms of numbers. And wow, we have a significant advantage on the battlefield itself. So let's see what we can do. I'm actually wondering whether I should just charge my units straight in here. But I, you know what? I'm going to just wait and see what our allies decide to do. Because thankfully, the way that this mod works in its recruitment system I'm a little bit more shall we say liberal when it comes to throwing my units into the into the battles you know because usually you're gonna have to run around to villages and all that sort of thing and you know level them up from scratch and yeah you know you're still leveling them up from scratch but you can very easily gain a whole bunch of units just from going to a nearby town or a nearby hunting camp if you're an Uruk and uh, you know getting a whole bunch of units from there very very easily and that's great I actually really like the way that the recruitment system is done in this mod at least it does reduce a lot of the micromanaging and the uh, the busy work because you're able to just pick up a whole bunch and then just be like yes I have a full army again fantastic great yeah it's really nice anyway uh, you know what I think I'm actually gonna I have told my units just to charge in, I think, so they are running all over the place. There seems to be a whole bunch of horse archers just scattered throughout the battlefield, and that's not great because they are going to absolutely murder every single one of our units very easily indeed. But I would like to use my two-handed sword a little bit more. I was actually watching the battle in the previous round, and it seems like two-handed swords are actually not even that bad. It seems like a lot of people are using two-handed swords, a lot of people are using very, very cool-looking clubs and uh, blunt maces and things, and I think it might be an idea for me to look around and see if I can find a better blunt weapon. Because at the moment, obviously, my blunt weapon is subpar. It is really not very good. But I wouldn't have been able to kill that Rohan youth with a club, because, well, the, uh, the club I currently have at the very least, because it obviously has a very very short reach whereas the sword that's much more much more capable of doing what I need it to do is this warg literally charging after that horse archer does it literally want to kill that horse archer if it is that's pretty awesome I don't exactly know whether the mounts have like it, their own AI or something like that but I wouldn't be surprised I mean it seems to be no no never mind it's just running randomly and they just happen to be running after each other oh okay well that's fine that's absolutely fine. Okay, so, yeah, anyway, let's see if I can maybe... I'm not going to be able to kill this guy, am I? I'm actually hoping that I will be able to, but... No, he's run out of arrows. Oh, okay. He's run out of arrows. So, uh, uh, no, he doesn't seem to have run out of arrows. That's weird. He still has some in his quiver, by my reckoning, so it's a bit weird. Oh, well. Yeah, this is when I wish I had some ranged weapon, but... On the other hand, I kind of wish I, I still didn't because, personally, I feel like being a melee-only character as an Uruk is kind of the way to go. 
Wow, look at those scary eyes. The scary red eyes peeking out from the helmet as I almost get myself killed looking at my eyes. That's great. There we go. Take that. You. Oh, okay. Hello. I'm dead. Yeah. I thought to myself, oh, it's my guys. You know, they're helping me out. No. No, they were not. They certainly were not. Well, the enemy has almost been routed entirely. There's only 41 of them remaining. And uh, we should be good. I did level up, by the way, in that previous round. So I should be able to gain a couple of skills. Well, it seems like the final group of Uruks and the final group of the Rohan peoples are attempting to fight each other. And we're going to see how it goes. Bear in mind there are about, I'd say about 50 of our own forces here and there are maybe about 15 of the enemy's units so it really depends on the unit quality of Rohan here whether they are actually going to pull this off I personally would doubt it with so many units up against them I really don't think they're going to do anything here yeah they're, they're absolutely being murdered by our fellow orc despoilers amusingly enough these despoilers have been extremely useful in this battle and uh, you wouldn't think so you wouldn't think so because i mean we've seen them previously in this series and the despoilers generally don't have very good stats they seem to come with much much lighter armor and uh, in general they don't seem very useful but they do come with some very very useful weapons and that is obviously in the form of clubs and maces and all kinds of things that are extremely good against heavily armored units so that's the reason why many of these enemies are falling before the despoilers because they just have the the units now. They have the weapons capable of defeating them. But anyway, there you go. That was kind of costly. We lost 77 allied casualties right there. I lost seven of my own units, which is... Eh, it's kind of negligible because in general most of my units were not even that highly leveled, so it's not really a big deal. Otherwise, uh... Oh... We actually still have a couple of units here to fight. Okay, this is kind of weird. I actually have n uh, Wait a minute. Why am I why am I the only one charging in here? Oh, units of Oh, wow. Okay, I was actually super super worried there for a second. I was thinking to myself, why am I the only one here? Ah, <laughs> oh, that was uh that was kind of a scare, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a real big scare. Okay. This is going to be kind of difficult because the enemy seems to only have skirmishers remaining. And you know how these guys are. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I'm able to at least do something. Maybe I'll be able to kill some. Get some XP. There we go. There's, there's a little bit of XP for us. I literally have 1% HP. I don't even have 1% HP. I apparently have 0% HP because I was knocked out with 0 damage. <laughs> uh, I'm actually kind of wondering how I was even able to enter this battle in the first place. I actually thought to myself that I would not be able to get into any other rounds, but it seems like these skirmishers wanted to run away in the previous battle, and that's exactly the reason why they were here in this round. And uh, it's kind of disappointing to me, really, because I, I actually would have very much preferred to stay alive here, but yeah, zero damage when you have zero HP. I guess that's that's just how it goes. That's just how it goes. Oh, well. Only two enemies remain, and, uh, well, one of them is getting swarmed absolutely mercilessly right there, and then there's another one over here attempting to escape, and they have stopped him in his tracks. There we go. Very nice again. And then once again, a despoiler gets the last hit. Very good. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so there we go. Let's continue onward. And, uh, yeah, I was actually hoping for this. I was hoping to gain a huge amount of rank points here. 16 rank points is pretty good, I guess. And, uh, yeah, you, you turned up just in time, Bay Uruk. I will not forget your help. Now we must be sure to press our advantage. Yeah, let's, let's try. And uh, King Thea didn't manage to escape. Grimbold managed to escape. Oh, wow, everyone, everyone managed to escape by the looks of things. But we now do get the opportunity to take a huge amount of wonderful prisoners. And I'm going to try and see if I can take... Oh, wow, there's elite... Oh, okay. There's actually elites here, so I'm gonna just uh, transfer a couple of these out here. I don't exactly know what's best, but I'm gonna just try and get the ones that sound expensive, I guess. 
Veteran Rider is better than Lancer. I don't exactly know about that. I guess we'll just leave it like that. And, oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, now that that's exactly the reason why doing these pretty awesome big battles is really a good idea. Because we're now swimming in good quality metal, metal scraps. And, uh, yeah, now uh, I'm going to have to sell this two days old beef. And... The wheat actually doesn't do anything for us. Amusingly enough, I actually bought some wheat earlier, and I was like, yes, I'd like to buy some wheat. And Uruks, they probably don't eat wheat, do they? They probably don't. Anyway, let's just take a couple more of those scraps, and that's it. There we go. Fantastic. Wow, that was a... Look at that. Mog literally only has 14 units remaining, and the rest of them have, well, significantly less as well. But there you go. That was a pretty epic battle, and I'm happy that I was able to be a part of it. Hopefully that has given me the next rank up. I'm actually unsure whether that actually works. I mean, look, this is exactly the breakdown of what I've currently got here. I don't have any traits at the moment, I don't think. No, I don't have any traits. What about my character report? You are in perfect health. Oh, that's great. That's very nice. Okay, well... That will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.